Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name's Stephen. Today I'm doing another monthly writing question and answer session. This is where people have sent in questions on the community tab and I'm just going to answer some of them and do a kind of roundup about once a month depending on how many questions I get. So this can be questions about writing, finding an agent, traditional publishing as those are the areas that I focus on mostly. Also fantasy obviously because I write fantasy books. I can't talk about self-publishing because I haven't really done it so I can't advise you on that. So the first question was, how do you map out a character arc? I've seen some authors use Excel. Okay, so I don't use Excel, but recently I did a video on writing a synopsis. And in there, one of the questions that people have been asking is, what should the synopsis focus on? And a number of agents answered, and one of them said they want to know about the main beats and the main arc of the character within the book. So if you've got a one point of view or two or three, you focus on that main kind of arc. And this is kind of related because the next agent said, oh, you should focus on the main plots of the uh, beats of the story and the arc of that. And then the third agent had said, well, surely the two are connected, the story and the character. And that's how I tend to work because I plan all of my books. I know the story. I know the beginning, the middle, the end, and I know some of the kind of milestones along the way. And then you have the, the characters that interact with each of these. And of course they can change the course of the story a little bit, but it's more a case of knowing how I want the characters to interact with the main plot beats. Say you're writing a rags to riches story, someone who's a farm boy and become a great hero. That's the main arc of their story. And then you would weave it through the course of the main plot beats. I don't tend to work that way. I kind of start with the characters and the story at the same time and I weave the two together. I kind of know the main arcs of the characters only by what's happening and through that I can decide if someone's going to become a great hero or a villain or if they get into a, a war in the middle of the book then obviously you know are they entangled are they going to fight in the front lines are they going to try and escape it are they a coward all of these things I've worked out ahead of time because I know what the character is like so if you've built the character you know how they will react in any given circumstances so basically you could throw one character at any story pick a book off a shelf and throw one of your characters in there look at all the main beats and you know what's going to happen to the character so I don't plan the arc, I plan the course of the story, and I have certain characters that interact with that story. So I don't have any kind of excels or anything like that. If that works for you, great. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Just have a go and find what's right for you. The next question I received is, is it better to write for half an hour a day rather than plot several hours and put that aside to write? And my answer is always yes. Whether you're quite an established writer or someone who's just starting out, but especially if you're writing your first book or you're just getting into writing, my advice is always to write in small slices of time rather than huge slabs. And the reason is writing, like anything else, requires practice. I believe your brain is a muscle or the writing part of it is anyway. And if you write for half an hour every day, or even just five days a week, that builds up over the course of a month or and over several months, and you'll get a lot of words done. Whereas if you sit down and try and write for a solid block of say two or three hours, for the first hour you might do quite well, but by the second hour you'll get really tired and you just won't be producing very much and it won't be very good and by the third hour it'll just be rubbish and you'll be wasting your time because it takes a lot of practice to build up to that kind of a span of time. Some people set daily word counts or monthly word counts. If that works for you, great. I'm not saying you should. I have a thousand words limit a day. If I do that within the first hour, I can walk away and I've done my thousand words. If it takes me four hours, fine, that works. But I do it because I know I have to do so many words per month and so many months to finish for my deadline to get the books published. But if you're just starting out, I would start with a small segment and just practice. Peter Brett, the author of The Warded Man, also the, called The Painted Man, famously wrote that book on the commute into work on his phone. He would write for sort of half an hour, 40 minutes going into the train, into work, and the same coming home. He'd just write it in his phone, typing away, and the same on the way back. And when he get home at, at night, he'd upload it to his computer, he'd tidy it up a bit, check it, revise it a little bit, leave it next day, 
onto the train and do the same thing again. And that was a small segment and he did it, you know, five days a week, fitting it in around family time and weekends and holidays and everything else until he got a finished draft. And that's quite a smart way of doing it. So if you can do something like that, get up half an hour early or at the end of the day, write for half an hour before you go to bed, maybe something like that, I definitely suggest trying it. The next question was, how do you decide which ideas are worth pursuing? That's quite a tricky one. Okay, so I have a lot of ideas. I'm not saying, oh, I'm, I'm brilliant, I'm special, I have so many ideas, I'm so awesome. But ideas are easy, ideas are cheap. Um, that doesn't make you a writer. Just because you have lots of cool ideas, so what, so what? You can write them all down. And that's kind of the key thing. If you have a couple of ideas a day, write them down, put them on a bit of paper, put them in a notebook, put them on a file and put them away. And if you keep generating lots of ideas, file them. The way you know and if an idea is worth pursuing is that it keeps talking to you. Even when you've put it aside, especially when I'm working on a book, I always get that kind of grass is greener thing. And from talking to lots of other authors, they have the same thing as well. Writing a novel takes time. For me, it takes anywhere from six months to a year. And that's a lot of focused, hard work. It's a lot of effort and it's a lot of hours. And it's quite a slog. Anyone says, oh, it's easy, I just breeze through a novel. Great, but for most other people, it isn't. It's a slog. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of time. So when you're in the middle of a project like that and you suddenly get another idea, it can be very appealing because it sounds so fresh and new and exciting. And you think, oh, I'd want to go and do that. But the problem is, if you put your book down that's half finished and then you pick up the next idea and start working on it and developing it, in a few months time, you're going to be exactly the same place you were and then you've got two half finished novels. So the way you know if an idea is worth pursuing is that even if this other one keeps niggling at you and talking at you, what I would suggest is write it down. Write as much of it as down as you can. Kind of expunge it from your brain and put everything down in a massive blast, put it in a file and put it away. And if it keeps talking to you and you keep getting more ideas or more notes whilst you're working on something and little bits and pieces, keep writing them down and keep putting them. Focus on that first book and finish it and finish it and finish it. And then go and look at your file, whether it is the idea that was talking to you or some of the others, and then start playing around with them. And that way you'll find out which ideas are the ones that you want to continue with. Because what I do is sometimes I'll come across a bunch of ideas and I've just forgotten about them. And when I look at them with a, a bit of hindsight, I go, yeah, that's, that's not very good. I've, I've kind of, I think I've got that one from, I was watching this on TV at the moment and I was going through that kind of a phase or, oh, that one looks quite interesting. I think it's Dean Koontz used to do this. I don't know if he does it anymore, but what he would do is if he got an idea, he'd take an index card and he'd write a couple of sentences down and put it in a drawer. And when he'd finished one book, he'd take out the number of cards and he'd go through them. And, th and kind of same kind of thing, go through and go, oh, that one looks quite cool. You'd put the card down and you'd start writing. And because he didn't plan his novels, it was quite easy for him in case of, I'm finding the best idea from my own stack that looks appealing. And he'd start discovering that idea and start working forward. For me, because I do plan my novels in a bit more detail, I don't sort of do 20, 30, 40,000 words on each idea but there is notes, there's pages, there's character ideas, there's little pieces of dialogue, there's world building, whatever it might be. And it starts to create this kind of collage of things. And I can look at all these different ones and work out which one is most appealing, which one looks really exciting, which one do I think I would have the most fun working on? Because that's what you have to remember. If you're gonna work on this book for a year, two years, you want to be enthusiastic about it. You want to be excited about it because after a while it will get tiring and it will become a bit of a chore and you need to have that excitement to keep driving you forward to get to the end of the draft. The next question I received is, what does an outline for one of your books typically look like? Okay, so I plan my books, as I said, and what I tend to do initially is I have a character Bible, which tells me a bit about the people, who they are, what kind of information I want to impart across the course of the story, some of their main characteristics. I, I usually have a bit of a map, that's just for me. Most of my maps are never seen because they're kind of hand drawn. My last couple of books did have a map in because it was relevant to the story, it was a quest story. But the main arc is I plan roughly the rise and fall of the story. I know the beginning, 
a kind of midway point and an end and I write a bunch of notes on all of these things and then I have to break it down even further and eventually an outline for me will be a chapter by chapter breakdown. Chapter one I'll have a couple of bullets, maybe half a dozen bullets, chapter two, chapter three, all the way through. And once you've got that stage I'm then able to kind of take a step back, look at it and adjust it accordingly and then think right is this satisfying the for the character? They go through all of this and they don't really do much for the last third. Right, that needs to change and I can change the story or change the arc of the character there. The next stage after that is I add more detail because half a dozen bullets per chapter isn't really a lot. I flesh it out, I put in things like what, what is this chapter actually about? What happens to the characters? What are the main beats? And if there's a number of point of view switches which I don't tend to do. I tend to have one chapter dedicated to one point of view. That tends to work for me because I write a lot of multiple point of view books with three or four. I can also, I put the character's name at the top of each chapter. So then I can then say, oh, I've got chapter one with this character A. I don't come back to them until chapter 10. That's, that's a long time. What have they been doing whilst all of the other characters have been doing stuff for nine chapters? And then you can play around, add something in. So I, I want to have a satisfying arc of the story, I want the characters to have enough screen time, I want it to feel organic. You might be able to see something that you've set up and you don't pay off, or you get to the end and you think, oh, I wish I'd put something in earlier. You put it in earlier at this stage, and then when you come to write the book, people will be like, oh, that was brilliant, there was these clues, and when I read it the second time, it was there. Yes, yes, I planned it all the way from the beginning. Yes, it was always the plan. You can say, no one knows, no one knows, it's great. So, start with a light plan, add more detail onto the outline, add more detail, revise it, look at it. It's basically almost like you have a couple of trees in the distance and then you get a bit closer to the forest and then a bit closer and a bit closer and it's at what point you decide, right, I've got enough meat, I've got enough flesh on, you know, now I can write it, flesh on the bones of the skeleton, if you like, of this book. Uh, some people keep going even further and have, you know, 20, 30, 50 uh, bullets per chapter. That kind of robs some of the joy for me because I don't always know everything in the chapter and I get these creative leaps and that's part of the, the kind of pleasure of writing the book for me. It's everything's planned out to the nth degree. It just becomes a chore. So, but that's just my personal opinion on that. Another question that was actually emailed in was, given that you know how difficult it is to get a book traditionally published, do you still DNF books? Do you kind of still give up on books? Um, absolutely. Yes, because at the end of the day, first and foremost, I'm a reader. I've been reading fantasy ever since I was a little kid. I love fantasy first. It was, you know, myths and legends in the local library. And then I started reading, you know, things like the Belgariad books by David Eddings when I was about like 10 or 12. It's probably a little bit too young. And then I jumped to things like David Gemmell when I was a teenager and so on and Terry Brooks and all this kind of stuff. But I'm still a reader. I'm still always reading fantasy. I'm one of these authors that can read fantasy and write fantasy at the same time. Some people say it's too much like a busman's holiday. Some people say they're worried about copying their ideas and thinking, oh, I'm just going to keep pulling things from whatever I'm reading. But I'm not like that. I'm able to kind of separate the reader part and the writer part of my brain. So if I'm not enjoying a book, I'm going to put it down because there are so many good books coming out every year that I can't get through them all. And why slog forward on any book if I'm not enjoying it? Some people might say, oh, you should finish every book because you'll learn something from it. And if I'm reading a book and I don't like the character's voice or I don't like the character or I don't like the way the author does it, none of that's going to really teach me anything other than not to do that. So why slog through to the end if after 50 pages I think, yeah, this just isn't for me. I give books a 200 page kind of maximum limit. If I'm on the fence and think, eh, maybe I'll give it 200 pages. But if I'm really not enjoying a book, I can give up after 20 pages, 50 pages is my usual. And then I just go on to the next book because I've got a stack of books and new ones are coming out all the time that I'm desperate to read. So yes, absolutely. There's more books than time. So I do give up. Right, those are, that's a quick roundup of some of the questions. If you have any questions in the meantime, submit them on the community tab. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. If you want to join the private Discord, which is a private writing community, I've set that up. There's a link down below, but I'll be back soon with another video.